Good morning. My name is Paul Horwitz, and for the past 25 years, I've had the good fortune to have worked with both the United Nations Environment Program and the United States Environmental Protection Agency on an effort that UN Secretary General Kofi Annan once referred to as perhaps the most successful international agreement ever negotiated, the Montreal Protocol on Substances that Deplete the Ozone Layer. But just to be clear, I'm not here today representing either UNEP or the Environmental Protection Agency. Instead, on the occasion of this 50th anniversary of UNIDO, I'm here as a historian of sorts to share with you the unique view I had of UNIDO's contribution to saving our planet through its work on the Montreal Protocol. To recap history briefly, in the 1980s, the scientific community confirmed that the Earth's ozone layer was being destroyed by CFCs, halons, carbon tetrachloride, and other substances that were used globally in such critical industrial applications as refrigeration, sterilization, firefighting, and medical uses. Their importance aside, it was predicted that unless action was taken to phase out these wonder chemicals, their use would destroy the Earth's ozone shield and result in, among other things, hundreds of millions of excess cancers and even more millions of cases of cataracts. So the world had to act, and luckily it did, by agreeing the Montreal Protocol. One of the unique features of the Montreal Protocol was the agreement to help developing countries become full partners in this critical endeavor through the creation of a groundbreaking multilateral fund. But as we know, funds alone do not bring results. If the globe was to be saved, thousands of developing country industries and millions of end users would have to be supported in converting scores of industrial applications to ozone-safe technologies. And that's where UNIDO came in. In a never-ending effort to contribute to both industrial development and environmental protection, UNIDO Executive Director Sia Zon authorized UNIDO's Artic Chechnivorian to fly to Montreal and offer both the multilateral fund and the world community UNIDO's unique and deep experience in industrial technology, project development, and implementation of industrial conversions. In addition, UNIDO's experience supporting the development of national industrial strategies enabled them to contribute mightily to the policy framework that helped make the protocol and its multilateral fund a success. And what a success. Since 1990, with the help of UNIDO, the Montreal Protocol helped phase out virtually all ozone depleting substances, and it's put the ozone layer on a path to full recovery. Further, because those ozone depleters were themselves potent greenhouse gases, the Montreal Protocol is acknowledged to have made a significant contribution to addressing climate change. In furtherance of that goal, just last month, and due to the success of the protocol, the parties to the protocol agreed to use its instrumentalities to address high global warming potential hydrofluorocarbons. This decision has the potential to reduce over 80 billion metric tons of CO2 equivalent and to avoid up to a half a degree of global warming. Clearly, UNIDO will play a vital role in making these potential reductions a reality. UNIDO's contributions have been recognized through many awards, including an Ozone Champion Award from the United States Environmental Protection Agency and a 20th Anniversary Award from the United Nations Environment Program. However, as an observer of UNIDO's historic contribution to the protocol, I want to testify to an even more fundamental accomplishment from and reward for UNIDO. Whether it was in the form of projects, sector approaches, or country programs, UNIDO's work on the ground in over a hundred developing countries was done one firm and one industry at a time, and their partnership with those firms enabled them to not only meet ozone-friendly standards, but also to adopt new cutting-edge technologies. In so doing, UNIDO's work helped put those firms in a position to both meet their country's development goals and also to participate as real competitors in the global marketplace. Thus, UNIDO not only helped save the world's ozone layer, at the same time, it contributed significantly to industrial revitalization and national development. And isn't that what UNIDO is all about? And so it is with great admiration that I congratulate UNIDO, and in particular, the pioneering work of UNIDO's Archic Chechnivorian and Executive Director Siozon for bringing UNIDO to the Multilateral Fund and helping chart a course for both the past and future successes of those vital institutions. And as a result, it is my honor to speak to you as an international citizen and on behalf of a grateful world community and say thank you.